In this video, I'll show you some examples of using limit laws. Limits are an important concept in calculus, and it is also important to be able to evaluate the limit of a function as x approaches a specific number, say 3. And f of x could be many different types of functions, such as constant functions, power functions, constant multiples, sums and differences, products, and quotients. This may seem like a lot, but the limit laws are going to allow us to evaluate these limits fairly quickly. Let's go through these together. And let's begin by looking at these first two limits. In the limit on the left, the constant function is the function that is always 7 for any value of x. And on the right, the constant function is the function that is 2 fifths for any value of x. A limit law for constant functions states that the limit as x approaches a of a constant c is the value of the constant c. Note that for all of our limits, the value of a is 3. For the first limit, the value of the constant function is 7, so the limit is equal to 7. Now for the second limit, the value of the constant function is 2 fifths, so the limit is 2 fifths. Let's look at limits of power functions next. All three of these limits involve taking the limit of x to some power. The power law says that the limit as x approaches a of the function x to a power p is equal to a to the power p, where p is an integer. For all of these limits, the value of a is again 3. This means that the value of all of these limits must be of the form 3 to the p. For the first example, the power of x is 1, so p is 1 and the value of the first limit must be 3 to the first power, which equals 3. For the second example, the power of x is 2, so p is 2, and the value of the second limit must be 3 to the second power, which equals 9. For the third example, the power of x is 3, so p is 3, and the value of the third limit must be 3 cubed, which equals 27. For the next limit law, we'll build on two of the limits we've already evaluated. Here are two new limits to evaluate. On the left, the new function is 2 times the original function. On the right, the new function is 4 times the original function. These two new limits are both examples of constant multiples of limits we already know. The rule for this situation is, if you already know that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to some number l, then if c is a constant, the limit as x approaches a of c times f of x is equal to c times the number l. And for both of the limits here, a is equal to 3, so I'll show that change here. So for our first new limit, f of x is just x, and we already know that this limit is equal to 3. The constant multiple is 2, so the value of our limit is 2 times 3, which equals 6. For the second new limit, f of x is x squared. This means that the value of l is 9. The constant multiple is 4, so the value of our limit is 4 times 9, which equals 36. And this is how you use the constant multiple law. Now, for the next law, we'll keep these two limits on screen to use with the next limit law, which deals with limits of sums of functions. So here is our next limit. Notice how this limit involves the sum of 4x squared and 2x. And these are two limits we've already evaluated. When dealing with sums, if we already know that the limit of f as x approaches a is equal to l, and the limit of the function g as x approaches the same value a is equal to m, then the limit of the sum of f and g is equal to the sum of l and m. And this only works when you're evaluating the limits at the same value of x. In this case, x is approaching 3 for our limit, so I'll show that here. For our limit of a sum, f of x is 4x squared, so the value of l is 36. g of x is 2x, so the value of m is 6. So the limit of the sum is 36 plus 6, which equals 42. And it turns out that the rule for evaluating limits of sums of functions also basically works for differences of functions. That is, if we were subtracting 2x from 4x squared instead of adding, 
then we'd change the plus sign to a minus in our log. And subtracting the values of the limits would give us 30 instead of 42 as an answer. Now, we've looked at sums and differences, and next we'll look at limits of products of functions. And I'll keep this last example on screen to help us with the computation. Here is our next limit. It is a product of two functions, that is, we're multiplying the function 4x squared plus 2x by the function x minus 7. The rule for limits of products is, if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to m, then the limit as x approaches a of the product of f and g is equal to the product of l and m. And this only works when you're evaluating the limits at the same value of x. Now, we've already evaluated a limit for 4x squared plus 2x, and to help get things set up, let's also compute the limit for x minus 7. We can use our previous limit laws to evaluate this. We can evaluate this limit using the difference law. Within this, we can use the power law to evaluate the limit for x and the constant law to evaluate the limit for 7. So the value of this limit is 3 minus 7, which is equal to negative 4. Now, let's use the law to evaluate this limit. Here, f of x is 4x squared plus 2x, so the value of l is 42. And g of x is x minus 7, so the value of m is negative 4. Thus, the limit of the product is 42 times negative 4, which equals negative 168. In addition to evaluating limits of products, we can also evaluate limits of quotients. Here is an example of such a limit. This is a quotient of two functions, 4x squared plus 2x divided by x minus 7. This law is similar to the previous ones. If the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is equal to m, then the limit of the quotient of f and g is equal to l divided by m. This is provided that m is not equal to 0 because the quotient would be undefined if the denominator were zero. So to evaluate this limit, for our limit of a quotient, f of x is 4x squared plus 2x, so the value of l is 42. And g of x is x minus 7, so the value of m is negative 4. Thus, the limit of the quotient is 42 divided by negative 4, which equals negative 10.5. So now we've looked at a bunch of laws for evaluating limits of functions. This table summarizes all of the limit laws. The constant law allowed us to say that the limit of a constant was the value of the constant. The power law allowed us to say that the limit of x to a positive integer power was what you get when you plug in the value that x is approaching. The constant multiple law allowed us to say that the limit of a constant times a function is the constant times the limit of the function. The sum law allowed us to say that the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, and this also works for differences. The product law allowed us to say that the limit of a product is the product of the limits. And finally, the quotient law allowed us to say that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, provided that you are not dividing by zero.